Hello everyone and welcome to a video on the Casio CTS-1000V. The CTS-1000V and also the similar 500 um, has 800 tones within it. The 1000V also has the vocal synthesis technology as well. Um, but both of these keyboards are really useful as a MIDI module and a keyboard. So I'm going to show you how to set this up within a piece of software called Cakewalk by BandLab and show you how to access the tones without having to go into the manual and find bank numbers and program numbers and things like that. So if you go to um, the support pages on, on Casio.com you'll find there are some patch scripts written for CTX keyboards and one or two other keyboards as well. But there's nothing here for the CTS. So what I've done is I've written a patch script for the CTS that you'll be able to use within a sequencer door. And the one you need to use is Cakewalk by BandLab. It's a free piece of software and it's available from BandLab.com. You need to sign up and create an account and then you can download the software and install it. It's um, got a lot of features to it, uh, but the feature that we're most interested in is really with MIDI so that we can use um, a patch script within the software so we can access all the tones uh, and drum sets that are within the keyboard without having to go into the manual and find bank numbers and program numbers each time. So download the software. Once you've downloaded it, um, I'll show you what to do next. I'm going to include my patch script, a link to my patch script in the comments section of this video. So you should be able to access that. And then I'll show you how to install it into Cakewalk. So you need to go to the link in the comment section to download the patch script for the CTS-1000V and the file name is CTS-1000V um, underscore cake underscore lab and then it's dot INS. Effectively this is a, a piece of text, it's a text file and if I show you in this other window here you can see how it's a text list of all the data that we need, the names of the tones and their programs, program numbers and the bank numbers. All the way down. I've included for the CTS, I've included the lyric banks as well and also the sampling banks to be able to access um, the melody and the drum samples uh, and the drum sets. If you have a little scroll through the, the banks, some of them only have one sound within them, whereas others will have 128. For instance, the general MIDI tones have 128. Uh, I don't know why Casio have produced so many banks and, and not had them full with all the tones. We could have had fewer banks and had them full of sounds. Also, the way they're organized is a, seems to be a little bit random to me. The pianos aren't all in the same place. The brass or the strings aren't all in the same bank as well. But anyway, you've got the, um, the patch script. You don't really need to get into any detail there. So just make sure you've downloaded the correct patch script. And the next thing we're going to do is to actually start Cakewalk itself and then I'll show you how to add the patch script into Cakewalk. So once you've started Cakewalk you might get to a screen like this, the start screen. There's a few of the songs that I've already been working on uh, but we're actually going to work on a new project. So let's click on that and I'm just going to go for empty project. 
And another thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is on the keyboard itself, I'm going to turn this to local off. So that's in the menu setting. You want to go to local control. And make sure that's turned off. So now the keyboard is detached from the tones because everything is going to run into the software and control the patches that we're actually going to be playing. Um, on the main page of Cakewalk, it's divided into various columns that you can see. We'll get rid of a lot of this. Remember, we're only just dealing with MIDI. We're not going to be bothered about uh, recording audio. The good thing about this setup is you don't need an audio interface. This is just purely um, dealing with sequencing MIDI. Um, so just the cable, the usual cable, uh, USB cable out into your PC will get you going. So I'm going to first of all go to the Preferences menu, which is under the Edit screen, or you can type P for Preferences. And under the MIDI column, you should find Instruments. And it has all the output channels here. We've got 16 channels. Um, I've also made sure that the devices, you might also need to set up devices as well. Um, I've selected the Casio USB as my input and also for my output as well, which is why it's coming up here in under instruments under the output channel. But I want it to use a certain patch. You can see I've already got the CTX patch um, available, but I'm using a CTS. So we want to um, open that one, the one that you've downloaded from my uh, from within the comments link. So in order to do that, you need to click on define here. And then on the next window, go to import. And then find the patch script that you downloaded CTS 1000 underscore cake underscore lab. I like that and click open. You get another window, highlight it and click OK. And now that list has been added to your list of instruments. You can close that. It will come up in the list here. And you can assign it to any one of these 16 MIDI channels or to the whole lot. So I might as well do that to the whole lot. So I'm just going to hold down shift, press the bottom one in the list and click on CTS 1000V patch as my instrument. And then I'm going to click on apply down here. We can now close this window and we can add a MIDI track. So in order to do that, you go to insert MIDI track and we've now got a MIDI track here. I'm just going to um, expand it a little bit. And now we've got a tone going from, uh, I'm playing notes from the keyboard. It goes into the software, it finds the tone and it plays the tone. Remember, I'm still on local control off, so it's selected the tone. Looking at the screen for Cake Lab, in the first column on the left, this large column, this deals with um, all the parameters relating to the track. And the track list is the next column. Eventually, you might have several tracks of MIDI. And then the largest area across from left to right is going to be this, the, the main sequencing data that we record. The bar numbers are at the top. And when we press play, you can see the line scroll across the screen. Anyway, let's have a look uh, in the first column, the inspector track as it, uh, column, as it were. And here, where it's got MIDI channel, it's selected to none at the moment. So I'm going to select it to MIDI channel one. See this channel. The next 
uh, parameter to, to select is a bank. And if I click on that, you'll now see all the banks come up um, for the CTS. So let's choose the first one, which is a GM, a general MIDI tones. And then underneath that are the programs. So we'll click on there and you'll find the list of the programs. So by default, it's just automatically selected um, a piano tone. Let's say select vibes. And we could select another tone. Again, go to program. Let's have nylon guitar. I'm not going to do a big um, explanation of cakewalk. Um, that maybe will be in another video as well. But one thing we can do here, uh, which is really useful, is search for patches as well. There's a patch browser down here at the bottom of the um, inspector column. If you click on that, you'll get a window and it'll list patches from whichever list you want to search. We want to search the CTS 1000 list. And then you can type in some text here and it'll look for those particular sounds. So if we type in org, then it'll come up with the tones that have those letters within them. And we can even click on them here and audition them. I found it's not particularly foolproof. I think I've made the right numbers and uh, banks and patch numbers, uh, but it doesn't always work. But most of the time, and if that's the sound you want, you can click on OK. And now that's part of that track. And other things we can do uh, from the inspector column is there's a reverb control here. We can bring that up to max or bring it down. There's also chorus as well. And we can control the volume. And we control control the panning. So lots of things we can do with MIDI now that we've got uh, everything set up. If you go to the bank list, you'll notice I was mentioning earlier how many banks there are. I've put the lyric bank in as well. So if I go to the very first one in the list, if you've got a CTS 1000, you'll recognize um, that particular patch. And also I've put the sampling banks in, but they don't seem to appear in this list. They are here. And if you go to your patch browser again and select the 1000 list and type in, I think it's SMPL. We should come up with sample melody or sample drum. So let's click on that. So this key down on the bottom of my keyboard is playing a sample that's um, stored within the keyboard. So I hope that's useful. Um, as I said, it's not going to be a complete uh, tutorial on using uh, Cakewalk, but it'll get you started with using Banks and MIDI and uh, doing some sequencing. So just before we leave Cakewalk completely, I've created a two bar 
loop with four tracks. We've got four tracks, the first one being a synth bass. You can also hear the metronome playing there. So I've set up the metronome to play MIDI notes rather than using audio. And that can play back when we're recording and also when we're playing back the sound as well. And I'll turn it off. So there's my bass track. I've got some synth strings added into that. And I've panned the strings just to one side, to the right hand side a little bit, and taken the volume down as well. I've got a third track with some piano chords panned to the left. And then finally the fourth track is some percussion added into there. So all four tracks together will sound like this. So remember we're just using the tones from the CTS-1000 and we could record the audio of that into um, the sequencer, into the door and manipulate it further if we wanted to. But we can also export the MIDI data and play that back from the keyboard without using the sequencer. So I'm going to do that and then show you this little two bar loop playing um, in from directly from the keyboard. So we go to File, Export, Standard MIDI File, and it's called Cassie Loop 2. And I'm going to replace the one I saved earlier. And I'll show you now that playing back from within the keyboard. So the MIDI file that I saved from Cakewalk is now um, on a USB stick uh, in the keyboard. I've loaded it into the keyboard into one of the user songs. So if we find that song this is the MIDI file that we saved from Cakewalk. And because two of the tracks are on MIDI channels 3 and 4 on the CTS we can mute those tracks, uh, the left track 3 and right track 4 can be muted. Uh, one was the piano, one was the drums. Uh, if we wanted to as well. Anyway, I hope that's given you a little introduction, a brief insight into the patch script for the CTS-1000 and uh, get in touch with any comments that you have. Thanks for watching.